Hi everybody. So I go for chemo number five of round two or s session number five of round two, however you want to say it, 2.5. Um, I have my blood work done and so far it looks like uh, up until my last set of blood tests, it was my blood was pretty good except for some low magnesium. Well, this time my magnesium's at the low, norm low normal amount, but my potassium was well below normal, but not severely depleted. Um, and I think my phosphorus was also at the low normal. So my electrolytes are definitely shifting downwards. And I guess this time the potassium uh, deficiency was causing the muscle spasms, which it can do just like the magnesium deficiency can do. And the magnesium and potassium work together a lot of, like a lot of the other vitamins and minerals. So um, it'll be interesting to see what goes on with that. Um, I have been, so I've noticed that uh, in my blood work also, I'm now anemic, um, which is understandable with chemo. Chemo does that. It, it took a few months for it to really get low enough to be called anemic, but the red blood cell, uh, cell count and the hemocrit and the hemoglobin were all below normal, but not severely below normal, just below normal. So, but that does explain why I've been feeling more tired or I would call it exercise fatigue. I'll have energy when I get to do something, but I get tired pretty fast. You know, not really fast, but faster than I would normally at this time of the cycle. So the anemia, I believe, is causing that. But other than that, I'm doing okay. My, you know, of course, my energy is not as good. But hopefully after the second uh, rounds five and six of chemo, I hopefully my scan will show that the... Uh, cancer is controlled. I can take a break from it, let things recover. Hopefully I won't have to do chemo for a while, but we'll see. We'll see how treatment works, you know. Um, the tummy troubles have kind of calmed down. I'm starting my autoimmune uh, drugs up again, so we'll see if the tummy troubles return. Um, but we're starting at a lower level, so hopefully that will kind of cure that problem. Um, sleep has been pretty good mostly. But um, I can tell my, sometimes I get a little moody, especially in the middle of the 21 days, right around day 11, I just feel kind of grumpy and a little bit moody, but I'm pretty sure it's because all the blood numbers are pretty, pretty low at that time. That's the lowest, uh, when the body's at this weakest, is in the middle of the cycle. Um, but other than that, my MEGA scan came back with a, a slight improvement. So in, in, how many weeks was it? Oh, just, just three weeks, I think it was, yeah. I had a 1% improvement, so I guess that's good because over six months, the decrease was 4%. So having one month go up by 1%, that's pretty good. Uh, so we're doing the H&P, the Herceptin Progetta with the Taxotere coming tomorrow as far as I know. I don't think my blood work was bad enough to stop that. You know, the reason why they stopped it because with the heart. They didn't stop it because of the blood. Um, but she said that, you know, she's done the... H and P when the heart number was lower. So 49% is just 1% away and within the error of margin for the testing. So she, she feels comfortable. I feel comfortable. I want to do the taxidermy with the receptin progetta because I have a better chance of getting the ca cancer controlled. I don't have any new cancer pains, but I've been having, um, I believe it's my autoimmune pains where my hips and stuff are hurting and my tummy, my GI tract does have some gastritis or some kind of uh, irritation or and so we're t doing the protonics to help the all that heal up kind of reducing the acid and such so hopefully that will help but i can't i can say with some certainty that the diarrhea is not responsible for the um the minerals and stuff in my blood not being where they're supposed to be because it wasn't that bad this time so it's something else it's the medication that's causing it and the, the chemo essentially Less blood, you know. Um, I've been trying to eat better, more salads, more steaks, you know. So I, it's my my diet has been better. My intestines have not been flushing out with diarrhea every other day, so that's good. My, even my cheeks are not nearly as red. I do use sunscreen, but I was out in the sun a little bit, maybe too much yesterday, but that's all right. Um, but you know, nothing, nothing too weird. Even my fingernails. So I did a video a while ago about my fingernails. Um, I don't know, probably a few months, a couple months ago, and I tried using the fake nails. That really screwed up my nails because what ended up happening is the glue, 
the glued on nail ended up ripping off and taking off layers of the natural nail underneath off it would help the nail bed dry even worse. Um, so what I ended up doing, which worked good for my nails, was I have to keep them trimmed almost to the quick. And when I start getting problems, like th these two fingers tend to have the biggest problems, but you can see, you can see a, a very slight crack in the very middle. But what I do is I just keep it trimmed down and I, I check it every day and I put fingernail sh uh, polish hardener on it. And um, I don't know if you can see the chemo lines, but there's four chemo lines on there. Those little red lines that go, you know, from side to side, that's the chemo lines. So yeah, you can kind of see them in that one too. But they're on, they're on pretty much all the fingers. You can kind of see them a little bit more on some of the other nails, but that's just the side effect of chemo. So um, the nail hardener I've been using, where did it go? It's around here somewhere. Well, maybe it's not around here, so maybe it fell down. <laughs> I have cats, so they tend to knock things over from time to time. Oh, there it is. This is the one I use, and it seems to do a pretty decent job. I have to go back every two, three days. If you do a lot of outdoor work, I go, you know, I'll check it after doing that because that can, I wear gloves every time I touch the dirt or touch anything that could hurt my hands because I have my skin and it's just really fragile, which is again, another chemo side effect. But, um, you know, when the nail polish gets worn off near the tip, you know, I'll just go back and I take a light uh, sanding and then put a new layer on. But when it starts turning yellow and getting crackly, I'll just take it completely off with some nail polish remover. Um, then I'll put on some lotion to help rehydrate the bed. And then I'll put, when, you know, maybe a few hours later, I'll put a new coat of the nail hardener on her. And I, but you gotta keep, your, if you have thin nails because of chemo, and I, they're actually a little bit stronger than they've been in the past. My nails are actually, wow. <laughs> I've just got kind of like, hey, they're not so flexible anymore. I think my nails are stronger than they've ever been. But um, if, you're, if you do have thin or even like medium strength nails, thin to weak nails or medium to thin, um, keep them sealed because it keeps some moisture in. It helps prevent the um, nail bed from drying out, which could cause the nail to lift up. So keeping your nails hydrated. I put lotion on um, almost every day. I try to do it every day, but around the, finger, the fingertips, because I also have a skin issue where the skin gets really dry. I don't know if you can see, you can kind of see a little bit of a crack. And those cracks get really painful because the skin just, it just gets really hard. And then when you're doing stuff, it cracks the skin. And so I put lotion on that and that does help with that. I also use, um, for those cracks, I use this. And I tell you what, that stuff works wonders for skin cracks around the nails. It helps keep the dirt out, the moisture in which helps it heal. Um, so for the hands, you can use it on your feet too. So if you, I, the last, my first time through chemo, round one of chemos, I had uh, ingrown toenail issues and I learned how to properly trim my toenails so that I wasn't leaving little stabbing edges around the, you know, the left and right side of the nail. And they still, just a little bit tender, but I don't have any more infections. This whole chemo, last four chemos, I've had no toe, big toe infections. The first rounds, back last year I did and it was very uncomfortable so um, but as far as the hands and feet go the one thing I really haven't figured out what to do for is the neuropathy and so I have uh, kind of like a numbness sensations in my my big t my toes my middle toes and my fingertips are losing sensation but it's not enough to be debilitating or ow <laughs> I squished that cracked tip on that nail but um, yeah so that's just you can use a cold mittens and stuff, but I have rain ads because of my autoimmune and that just makes things, other things worse. So I just deal with the neuropathy. You know, I've learned to, you know, try to feel with maybe further up on my hand if I need to feel stuff. I just try to use that part of my finger rather than this part to feel things. Um, mouth is all healed. I don't have any angular chelitis. Now I am finding that the cracked corners or the angular chelitis will flare up right before the intestines get irritated. So if you're finding that you're getting the cracked corners and and then you know you find that maybe a day or two later you got diarrhea, this could be an early warning sign that your intestines are getting really ticked off about something. And so, um, but I do find the B vitamins do help 
um, with that. I think it's B2 or B6. I can't remember. I keep thinking it's B6, but I think it might be B2. The Bs. The Bs are important for a lot of things. They're important for blood cell production, and I do a lot of Bs. So maybe I need to do even more bees. My, my nutritionist said I needed to do more bees because of how I was feeling. And sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. You can't really put the sublingual things into a pill box because it's in its own container. And, you know, sublingual is a liquid. <laughs> so sometimes it's easy to forget that one. But, um, so that's the update. Uh, everything's, you know, pretty good. But again, no eyebrows, only a few eyelashes up here. The hair is still pretty much gone. I, I was wearing a little beanie, so it's like 90 degrees outside, but I have the air conditioner above my head, so my head gets cold. <laughs> but, um, yeah, doing pretty good otherwise. I think I might have either slightly fractured a rib or pulled a muscle in my, in my right rib cage. <laughs> trying to act like I'm 20 and not nearly 50. I'm trying to wrestle a little baby horse on to put a uh, halter on it. Yeah, and I heard a pop, and I'm like, uh oh. Oh, <laughs> sure enough, that day it started getting really sore, but that was a few weeks ago, and I'm and it's still a little sore, but it's feeling it's healing. So, you gotta remember when you're undergoing chemo and cancer treatments, you're not gonna be quite as durable durable as you were maybe say before cancer came. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I try to remember that, but sometimes you just kind of. I wasn't really planning on taking the, the little 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 pull down, but she was really strong and she she plowed me around and I just like she fell over and I went down with her and, and I was laying on her and the other lady put the halter on and I got I just rolled out. I'm like, okay, well let's hopefully nothing's broken. So <laughs> but hey, it was you know, it was kind of, you know, nice to kind of feel normal even though I ended up paying a little bit for it for a while, but hey, what's that's life, you you know, sometimes you pay for it. But anyway, um, so hopefully only two more chemos left. HMP starting up again. I don't have any new uh, pains other than the intestinal thing that's from the treatments, which is you know expected. A low blood count, which is expected. So um, you know, in the spasms, which is just from you know the blood, blood. So nothing new. I mean, my breathing is good. My heart's fine. You know, I don't, I don't. My liver and kidney functions still look good. So. You know, no weird heads things. So I'm, I think, I think the treatments are holding the cancer at bay. I'm hoping I'm in remission. I will have my PET scan in June. I will also have another um, mug of scan probably also in June, I believe, if I remember correctly. But um, I'll try to keep you informed. Um, if I learn anything new, I will share it with you. Um, but there are a lot of good treatments coming up down the line for HER2 positive cancers. And, you know, I, I, I have a feeling eventually that there's a possibility that I may become triple negative. So I'm also researching triple negative uh, treatments, which there aren't as many because they're triple negative. Now, what that means is um, like HER2 is a target that, that medications can target. Uh, hormone receptor positivity, ER and PR, which is progesterone and estrogen, are also targets which medications are available for. But when you're triple negative, all of those are missing. So there are fewer targets for drugs to go after. Um, so that those folks do have a less, you know, rosy outlook as far as how much time they might have before the cancer just does too much damage and you end up dying from the cancer itself. So, you know, as long as I stay HER2 positive, I have a good chance of being around for a while, you know, but I could lose that positivity. And so I'm just kind of preemptively researching triple negative because I want to know what my options are. And I'll give me a day of how much time I might have. You know, cancer, cancer in a way is a blessing because it gives you a chance to kind of set your stuff in order. Like if you just die from a heart attack out of the blue and you didn't even know you had heart disease, you're dead. It's like you had no time to prepare and your family had no time to prepare. So at least cancer, we have time to prepare and everybody can, you know, cope with it and learn to deal with the inevitability of death because we're all going to die. But, um, yeah, so I'm, you know, part of having any, any disease, any disease is to research as much as possible about possible um, medications, natural and um, pharmaceutical, you know, exercises and diet, like the whole shebang. They all work together. So, you know, if you have any kind of disease, whether it's terminal or not, learn about it. Become 
an expert in your disease. That way when your doctor suggests something, you can have an idea whether or not it's a good idea or they're just being lazy. And just like any other profession, there are bad doctors, there are bad cops, there are bad teachers, there are bad business people all over. You know, you're gonna get one once in a while. So you can't believe everything your doctor says. I have a friend that's going through medical issues right now and the doctor she has for this particular doctor, I am just furious with just, this doctor keeps con contradicting what other doctors are saying that needs to be done. Repeatedly contradicting. Emergency room doctors are saying, this needs to be done, this needs to be done, this, and she's going, no, you don't need to do this, this, or this. She's essentially trying to kill my friend and it's just, it's pissing me off. And it's pissing off this person's children and this person's spouse. So you can't believe everything every doctor tells you. Do your own research, to, you know, get second opinions because it could mean your life, all right? So as always, find your joy, share your joy, and be happy because no one knows when their day's gonna come. Take care, guys. It's not turning off.